Okay, it's very early in the morning, about 6 o'clock, 5.30, and I'm very tired. <laughs> I had to get up about 3.30 to come out here to the airport because I'm leaving the Philippines. I'll let you know where I land. Okay, here's the big reveal. I'm in Japan at Narita Airport, Tokyo. But it's not my final destination. I'm just here for a layover. I'll check in when I get to where I'm really going. Okay, so I just got into the U.S. I'm in America, back for the first time in almost two years, and um, I got to stop over here in San Jose. A lot of changes already. International flights, they don't give you free food anymore. I had a nine and a half hour trip, and you had to pay for your stuff in advance. And they had Wi-Fi on the plane, which didn't work, so I couldn't order anything. So I was starving when I got here, so I had to eat. So I stopped at this place and had a burrito that cost me $21 with tip. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that was nuts. So that's, uh, that's about a thousand peso. So that's for one burrito with water. So uh, things are a little different. I'm getting some culture shock here back in America. The next stop is Dallas. Okay, landed in DFW and I'm taking a lift ride to my hotel to stay the night. Then I gotta get up early, drive to Granbury, Texas, and pick up my car that's in storage so I can head up north. Uh, lift ride was about $21 US. So that's almost a thousand peso if you're keeping track. So it's been an expensive day so far. I had to pay $44 for a check-in on one of the legs of my flight and $89 on the other leg, plus the 21 bucks for lunch, and now the $21 for my lift. Not to mention, my cheap hotel is about $74. So it's been an expensive day. So uh, we'll check in later. Okay, um, just got my car out of storage or got a new battery put in. I stopped at AutoZone on the way to the storage unit. Got a new battery. Cross your fingers. Let's see if it works. Moment of truth. We have contact. <laughs> Houston, we don't have a problem. Crank that AC before I die. 109 today in Dallas, Texas. All right, the journey continues. Next stop, Tulsa, Oklahoma to my storage unit. Okay, before I leave Dallas, I have to stop and eat at one of my favorite joints. Hi. Hi. I'm good. I'm Here's your root beer. Would you like any ketchup today? No, no. We're good. Not Cracker Barrel. Not Whataburger, although that's very good. No, I've got to get my fix. All right, my In-N-Out Burger. I had to get my fix. I've been living in the Philippines for the last two years. No way. Yeah. Are so you back now? I'm back. Well, just temporary. But I had to get my fix. Yeah. Thanks, I will. Bye bye. Have a good day. You too.
Sunday afternoon and I'm heading out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, heading up to Nebraska. So uh, it's about a seven and a half hour trip to uh, my hometown in Fremont. So it's, but uh, the old car's been doing good, started up right away. When I put a new battery in it, it's been sitting for a year. Um, got some new oil and kind of a little old fresh job. I need to, need to wash it, it's so dirty. And I noticed it was sitting in storage outside, so it must have had a, a couple of storms in the year. I got some hail damage. Little, some little dents on the hood and the, and the roof. Nothing super bad, but you can tell that it's been through some hail. Um, those of you that are in the Philippines, those of my viewers in Asia that have never gone through hail storms, in the Midwest, the South, uh, you get a lot of big time storms and you get these, this hail that's frozen rain that can be, can get pretty big size, depending on how long it's up there, how many layers of frozen rain get around those balls, so and let's not get too technical, but I'm on my way to uh, Nebraska, leaving green country here, view out the window here, out the dirty windshield, but uh, this is, the Tulsa area is beautiful, it's very hilly, a lot of bluffs, and a lot of reservoirs and rivers. Um, they call it green country, so it's the, the more beautiful part of Oklahoma. Uh, most people think Oklahoma is just flat and dry and dirty, and that's the panhandle, but not here. This is, this is a really beautiful area. So we'll be leaving this, heading to uh, the good life of Nebraska soon. Okay, we're in Nebraska. Look at all the corn. The Corn Husker State. <laughs> a little cloudy, a little rainy. Not too bad though. Cool, 68 degrees. I haven't seen 68 degrees in a long time. <laughs> I don't think it's ever been 68 degrees anywhere I've been in the Philippines. But uh, here we are. State of Nebraska, Sunday evening, about 5 till 7, local time. I'm a little under two hours from my destination, so I'm driving north from Kansas, so I'll drive through Beatrice, and then Lincoln, and then up to Fremont, my hometown. So we'll see you when we get there. Okay, I had to stop at uh, in Beatrice to get something to eat, so... I haven't been back in uh, the country for two years, so I had to stop at Runza to get my favorite Runza sandwich. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right. If you've never been to Nebraska, you've got to try Runza's. You can only get them in Nebraska. Maybe Council Bluff, Iowa, I think. They, they might have a restaurant or two there. But it's a Nebraska tradition. Got to have a Runza. So good. Okay, so this is what a Runza looks like. And it's got cheese and beef and cabbage and all kinds of neat stuff in it. And really nice bread. It's very hot. <laughs> I need to get a franchise in the Philippines of this. Go really well. Super good. Look at that. Mmm. Mmm. Gotta get runs up. Okay, hometown, Fremont. Driving down. Clarkson Street heading to my old neighborhood where I grew up um, after we moved from the farm. So, the 
This is what small town in Midwest America looks like. I'm sure if you looked long enough, you'd find a little pink house. <laughs> it's a beautiful day, nice fall day. I love fall in the Midwest. Leaves start to change. The air is a little crisper. Chilly. It was 57 degrees this morning when I got up. And the high today is about 75 or something. Like that. 75 right now. early 1900s, something like that. It's pretty though. It's a neat little town, about 25,000 uh, population. But uh, we didn't, we weren't rich by any means. I would say we were probably She gave us, you know, they gave us what we needed. We didn't get anything extra, but what we needed. This is uh, where my, one of my best friends growing up lived, Tom and Pete Snowball. They were um, Omaha Sioux Indian. Um, he looked like, he had a big afro. He looked like Michael Jackson when Michael Jackson was young. <laughs> but um, he was a really, really good friend of mine. Okay. So don't be shocked, but there's the house I grew up in, 623 East 2nd Street. I, when my sisters, I had three older sisters, um, see that big pine tree in the back? My, my youngest sister worked at a, um, at a nursery and uh, when she was in high school, I was at her first job and she bought this little tree and planted it in the backyard there. And then the dang thing almost died. She didn't ever take care of it. So it was just about dead. And so I started watering it. And uh, now it's huge, it's back there. But uh, that was my house growing up. It was a very small house. Um, when all my sisters were still there, I had to sleep on the couch downstairs because there weren't enough bedrooms. Um, I had to wait till the, my two older ones moved out before I was able to, to uh, move into a bedroom, but that's where I lived growing up, poor as it was. 